على الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولو الله لصاخت الأرض بأحلها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا سلوات In the month of Ramadan this is one of the best opportunities for a mu'min to benefit from the liyafat <laughs> and the hosting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has hosted the mu'mineen and believers as his guests and in this liyafat we are supposed to benefit from two things one is dua and the second is istighfar so alaykum bid dua alaykum bid dua wal istighfar amma ad dua fa yadfa'u ankum al bala you people are supposed to do dua and istighfar and as far as dua goes fa yadfa'u ankum al bala is going to repel the bala from you wa amma al istighfar fa tamhu al zunub and as far as the istighfar goes it erases the sins this is where our orofa mention three wisdoms behind fasting like i said earlier the subject of my speech in the month of ramadan is about imam sahib azman ali salam which i am going to start in the nights which are scheduled for the zana programs inshallah starting from this thursday but uh, uh, i have been asked to talk a little bit about the month of ramadan several young boys and girls in our community have started to fast um, some of them are fasting for the first time probably in this month of ramadan so uh, we pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the uh, strength in their iman and their bodies to have sabr and patience over the concept of fasting in islam there are three major benefits that we human beings get from fasting the first is fahmul asrar understanding the secrets a mu'min who believes and is steadfast on his iman and fasts for the sake of Allah with sincerity is supposed to open up his soul and the doors and gateways in his spirituality towards the ma'nawi and metaphysical blessings of Allah that we are supposed to receive and we are supposed to seek from Allah the material blessings are the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already promised us to provide what is needed to live in this world he has already 
provided us and the wealth and the risk and the money is already destined and decided and fixed. And this is something which is common between us and the animals. It's not a big deal to, you know, to ask about these blessings and there's nothing to worry about that. What we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are humans, what we need to focus on that the animals cannot ask and cannot get and what distinguishes us from the rest of the creatures around us is the ma'navi blessings. And this is what our orofa say, by fasting and abstaining from the harams and abstaining from eating and drinking and all the muftarat, we are empowering ourselves to become eligible to receive the blessings, uh, the ma'navi and metaphysical physical blessings of Allah. And uh, because stomach is considered to be the worst container that is ever filled by a human, ma mala'a adamiyun wa'an sharran min al a human being never filled up a container worse than the stomach. So when Islam considers stomach to be the worst container ever filled by the human beings, this is where our orofa say that when you eat full, you are now ineligible to receive any ma'navi and metaphysical blessing of Allah. So th this is where we realize the greatness of the month of Ramadan through hunger and thirst and avoiding the harams, we make ourselves eligible for the ma'navi blessing. That's the first thing to remember. And the second thing to remember is the second benefit and wisdom of fasting is hurriyat, freedom. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his khutbah al shabaniya The khutbah that he delivered in the last Friday of the month of Sha'ban, I have been asked, saying to uh, you to inshallah, we will talk about that khutbah and never ended up talking about that inshallah sometime if Allah allows, we will talk about that khutbah in detail uh, to you. But in that famous khutbah al Sha'baniya of the Holy Prophet, he said, according to what's narrated in Kitabul Amali by Sheikh Saduq rahmatullah alayhi, that Ya ayyuhan nas inna anfusakum marhunatun bi a'malikum fafukkuha bistifarakum O oh, you the people, your lives are under the captivity of your actions. So set yourselves free through your istighfar. That means you people are under captivity. You are not free. You are, you are seized by your amal. Whatever we do, our bad deeds that a human being performs are capturing us. These are all chains coming up till our chins. Isn't it right? And all these chains will appear when a person dies right before his death. He starts seeing those chains you know, and what we call aghlal in the anaq, sarat al amalo, aghlalan fil amaq, fil anaq. When a person dies, the, all the actions are now chains in the necks. So the same chains are tying us, and kullu nafsim bima kasaba, bima kasabat rahina. Every person is under the captivity of his. Uh, actions that's what we learn in the light of this and uh, the real freedom is what is we are trying to gain in the month of Ramadan freedom from this world and its attachments so we become slaves towards Allah and if we don't go for that we will become free what the people of this world who are running and worshiping this dunya what they're trying to promote is that we become free from Allah getting enslaved by this world and Islam is trying to achieve the opposite for the believers 
we become free from this world to get to become slave of Allah which is the real freedom so these are two opposite poles now look at what Amir Mumi alayhi salam has said according to this narration in Bihar that man tarka shahawate kana hurra whoever leaves the shahawat and lusts and desires is the is a free so we become free when we leave our desires so this is the this is the alamat of a free person and a free person are we still trying to do what we like how to judge we benefit from the month of ramadan this year here's the criteria to judge our own selves do i still at the end of the month of ramadan try to do things that i like or i have ended up to come to this decision finally i will never do what i like i will do what allah likes for me this is the difference between infidel and a believer when we are believers we don't decide nothing for ourselves our decisions are already made by allah in the sharia we learn the pre-decided decisions of allah and apply and that's the meaning of the real freedom that we are up to in this month of Ramadan. That we stop deciding our lifestyles and choices and we let the Creator decide our life. So this is the benefit number two and the wisdom number two of the month of Ramadan. I'm talking very, very precisely and shortly, uh, specifically for our youth to understand and grasp the whole wisdom why we are fasting and this hurriyat our scholars say our orafa say this this hurriyat is guaranteed through the concept of istighfar which i mentioned in the beginning of my speech when we do the istighfar and we set ourselves free from the sins that's how we ensure we are heading towards the freedom through the istighfar so hurriyat means setting ourselves free from Ghayrullah, anyone and anything other than Allah. That's the meaning of Hurriyat and free, real freedom. Not just you end up do whatever you feel like doing it. That means you are a slave of your desires. So Amir Mumi salam has mentioned in his Nahjul Balagha, his letter number 53, um, that in the deen fi aidil ashrar. This is what our scholars say, we are supposed to make our religion free. We are supposed to make our country free. We are supposed to make our nation free. We are supposed to, and all that can happen if we are making our soul free. If you may succeed to make your soul free from this world and its attachments and desires and your likenesses, that's where you are, you know, you will be able to make your nation free if you fulfill the rest of the merit and you will be able to make your country free and you'll be able to make your religion free. Religion needs to be freed. Religion is a hostage right now. Islam is, a, is hostage in the hands of those evil people like Taliban and all those nonsense people. Isn't it right? They made Islam as a hostage. And even other than them, there are so many uh, of various religions who have been made, make, consider, made their religion hostage in, in the hands of their desires which are dictated by the influential lobbies. So uh, there are two signs which I would mention before I come to the end of my speech. Two signs to determine are we free or not. One, sign number one are we inclined towards this dunya and its attachments do we still like it if we still have likeness and inclination and raghbat towards this dunya that means we are not there yet we have a long way to go sign number two are we afraid of death if we are that means we are not there yet there is a long way to go so and those of the people who are you know, who are free so this these are two signs for those who are not free now those who are free they also have uh, two signs they are not attached to this world of matter alamun nasut and alamut tabi'ah and alamul mulk 
and various names and various sciences of Islam. They're not attached to this world at all. Instead, they're attached to Alamul Malakut, the world of the hidden realities. So, Lawlal Ajal Alati Kutibat Alehim, Lam Tastakir Arwahuhum, Fi Abdanihim, Tarfata, Ain in Shaukan, Ila Sawab, Wahaufam, Minal Aqab. Had it not been for the fixed time of death, their souls, that means the souls of the Muttaqeen, would have not stayed here in this world for the blinking of an eye, for the sake of the you know, eagerness towards the sawab and reward and khawfam bin al iqab for the sake of the fear of the punishment. So those muttaqeen are not attached to this world, you know, at all. So the first, first sign for those who are free is that they are attached with the world of hidden realities and akhirat, not at all with this world. And second of all, they, they, have, uh, they have no longer fear of, the, of death is no longer existing in their personalities. They do not fear the death. Instead, they are ready to embrace the death. And that was the third Hikmat and benefit of our Orofa say for fasting, which is that is fasting empowers a mu'min to embrace, to get ready for liqa'ullah. Fasting empowers a human being to, to be prepared for meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the benefit and wisdom number three, why in the world are we fasting? So, um, this is, uh, if you remember, I mentioned the hadith in the first, na first speech of mine, uh, which is uh, as sawmu li, that's from Rawzatul Muttaqeen, as sawmu li wa ana ajzi bihi. Allah had said that fasting is for me, and I am going to reward for it. And some of the orafa read it in the Sighatul Majhul, as sawmu li wa ana ujza bihi. Fasting is for me and I am the one who is reward for it. Not that I am going to reward it. I am myself. In other words, Allah is saying, according to this interpretation of the hadith, that they, this, this, there is an ihtimal that what Allah means is that, according to this orofa, that Allah himself is the reward for the fun who is fasting. This is about liqa'ullah. And this kind of reward is never find, found for any other worship of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand and practice the ma'arif and high level teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Ya Allah, 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 Ya Allah. Allahumma mansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa akhdul al-Kufar wa al-Munafiqin. Allahumma mansur man nasir al-Din. واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر واحفظ وأيد علماءنا الربانيين ومراجعنا الربانيين لا سيما الولي الفقي قائد المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فك عن الأسراء المسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأشياعه وأتباعه وأعوانه بجاه محمد وآله الطاهرين